Hi everyone, my name is Beth. I'm a librarian at the Weyenberg Library in Mequon, and I'm here today to talk to you about the Weyenberg Library Catalog. Technically, it is the Monarch Library Catalog. We are part of the Monarch Library System, and we share a catalog with all of the other libraries in that system, but we have a specific version of the catalog that sort of prioritizes our stuff. So I'm going to talk about how to get to that version, um, how to search for things, how to request things, and then how to see what you checked out and what you have on hold. When it comes to getting to the catalog, your best bet is really to start off at our website, so flwlib.org, or just Google Frank L. Weinberg Library, and it should be the first result that comes up. Once you land here, this is our home page, so if you're looking at something like this, you are in the right place. You'll want to mouse over eServices over here near the top of the screen, and then on the left, click on Library Catalog. And that will take you here. So you can see at the top, it's the Frank L. Weinberg Library Catalog um, specifically, as opposed to the Monarch Library Catalog more generically, or as opposed to another local library catalog that would be labeled with their information instead. From here, um, in this top toolbar, really the only drop down menu that is relevant to you is this My Account section. Um, I will talk about this in more detail, but this is basically where you would go to see things you have checked out, things you have on hold, look at your fines, um, and things like that. On the left hand side of the screen, we've got a bunch of different links. There's some links to library information, like our website, the calendar, and our hours. We have lists of new titles that have come in in the last 30 days um, in the adult fiction section, in nonfiction, young adult, DVDs, audiobooks, all the different sections of our collection. Then we have links to the New York Times bestseller lists, as well as links to some of our digital content and our databases, and then finally some readers advisory resources like the 2021 Adult Reading Challenge, the Kids Pick Book Award selections, and a link to the reader slash material suggestions form where you can request that we buy a particular book for the collection. Back up in the middle of the screen, um, this is the quick library search bar, which I'll talk more about in a second. Underneath that is this rotating carousel of information. Um, so we update this every couple of weeks with things that we think you should know about or things that might be of interest to you. So right now we've got the winter reading challenge, some stuff about our databases, basically stuff that we are highlighting for you this particular month. Underneath that we have even more carousels. So we've got our staff picks, which are books that we have read and enjoyed or that we've heard about and thought that other people would enjoy. We have a new media one where you can see CDs and movies that have come in in the last month. Um, a genre picks section where we choose books according to a particular topic or subject. This particular theme is self-care or self-help, for example. And then noteworthy titles. So these are um, mostly New York Times bestseller list books, but also books that have been particularly popular in our community or that we've gotten a lot of questions about. So when it comes to searching for items, you do have a number of different ways that you could go about it, as you can probably tell from all these buttons and from the fact that there is a search uh, menu over here. But I find that the easiest way to get around the catalog is to use this quick library search bar. So you can put a title in here, an author in here, a subject in here, or you can put any combination of those details in here. Um, the more you know about the book and the more that you specify is usually better. So for example, I'm going to type in Lucky, because I'm looking for the book Lucky by Alice Siebold. So I put in the title, and then I'm just going to click on the magnifying glass and see what I get. 3,000 results, so that's a lot. I do know the author's name is Siebold, so I could just add Siebold. I could say Siebold, comma, Alice. I could say Siebold, no comma, Alice. I could say Alice Siebold. And then if I click the magnifying glass one more time, We've been narrowed down now to just four results, and these look more like what I'm expecting to see. So once you've got the results in front of you, you'll see the title, the author, some publication information, what kind of material this is. This icon means that we're looking at a book. You might also see an icon that looks like a book with a CD in it. That's an audio book. You may also see this blue square. That means that this is a digital item. So you would need to read it on a tablet, a Kindle, or your phone, um, and you would need to go in through the OverDrive website or the Libby app to access it. Um, 
So if you're curious about that, we do have videos about Overdrive and Libby that you can watch as well. If I wanted to see more about the book, like a summary, I could also click on the title or click on details on the right and get to see what it's about and, and when it, more about when it was published and um, any particular awards it won or other details like that. If I know this is the book that I want and I just need to see where it is, I could click on find it and it would give me a list of the libraries that own it and where it is in their collections. So for example, this particular copy is owned by the Grafton Public Library. It is in their adult nonfiction section and this is the call number. This is the number I'd be looking for to find it. Nonfiction books are pretty much universally organized by these numbers. Um, this is the Dewey Decimal System. It's, it's a series of numbers assigned to different subjects. Whereas fiction books and fiction items like fiction audiobooks and movies are usually organized by the author's name or by the title in the movie's case. Um, so we organize our DVDs by title and then we organize our books and our fiction generally by the author's name. So if we were looking at a fiction book in, in this particular instance, it would say AD Fiction, for example, and then it would say the author's last name, comma, their first name. Now when I clicked on Find It, I noticed that Frank L. Weinberg was not the, the one at the top of the list, which is what I would have expected to see if we own a copy. So, checking in here, I do see that in fact there are no copies available at this library. Now this says zero of zero, which means we don't own a copy at all. If this says zero of one, it would just mean that the copy was checked out. I can also see how many copies are available at other libraries in our system, of which there are six of seven. And because there are six, because there's more than zero, basically, um, that means that I can request this from another library in the system and they would send it over to our library within the next few days and then you could check it out and then return it to us and we'll send it back. If this said zero available here and zero available elsewhere and then you put a request on it, you would be on a wait list for the book and then once a copy came in, we would let you know and you could come and pick it up. If there are people ahead of you on the wait list, you would be able to tell that by looking at this current holds option. So this says zero, so if there was a wait list, you'd be the first. But if this said 10 holds, for example, and then there were zero copies available at this library and zero at all libraries, you would be number 11 on the wait list, if that makes sense. So looking here can tell you if the book is available at our library, elsewhere, or if you're going to have to wait for it. If you see a book that needs to be put on a wait list or that you can get from another library and you want to request it, you can. And you do that by clicking Request It over on the right hand side here. Then it takes you to a spot where you can go ahead and sign into your library account. Um, the barcode is the number on the back of your card above the barcode and it's entered as all one number without any spaces. And then your PIN is the last four numbers of your telephone number, typically. Um, if you enter both of those in here and that doesn't work, give us a call and we'll see what we can see uh, about your account. But I'm not going to go into detail on how to request things yet, uh, but that is what this screen looks like just as sort of a starter. I'm going to hit cancel and that will take me back to the results. So that is searching in general. You can search with the title, the author, and or the subject. Um, and then this is the screen that you'll see and these are what all these buttons mean. I'm going to go ahead and click on the banner at the top of the screen and get back to the front page. So I mentioned that you can search by subject, and now I do want to do one of those searches so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to look for psychology books. So I typed in psychology, and then I'm going to click the magnifying glass. I have 10,000 results. So over here on the left, uh, anytime you do a search, you'll have these filter options available to you on the left. So if you click on library, you can narrow down by which library you want to look at. We will float to the top, and that's good because that's probably what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Frank L. Weinberg Library. Then if I scroll down, I can also choose the type of material. So book, audiobook, DVD, things like that. I'm going to say book. Then I can choose my target audience, which is adult versus juvenile versus adolescent. We don't typically use the adolescent target audience very often. Usually you'll see things in the adult or the juvenile ones, but sometimes it's relevant, so sometimes it's worth trying. But I'm just going to say adult. 
If I wanted to, I could also narrow down by subject, author, and or series, um, which is really more useful if, for example, you're looking at an author. If I did a quick library search for James Patterson, then I could come over here and click on series and just choose his Alex Cross books, for example. I can also narrow down by publication date if I only want to see newer books. If I click on literary format, I can choose between nonfiction and fiction. And I'm going to choose nonfiction to narrow it down just a little bit more. So now I'm down to 627 results. And you can see that just like before, I'm getting all the same information that I got when I looked up the Alice Siebold book. Title, author, a little bit about it, a little bit about the publication, what it is. If I clicked on details or on the title, I could see a summary of it. And I can see that in this particular case, there's zero copies available at this library and zero at all libraries but we do own one. It's just checked out. So in this instance, if I said request it, it would come up and tell me that I'm going to be first on the wait list and then I'd be number one in line for the book. Let's see. I'm going to try to request a book here. Um, let's do the suggestible you. So I'm going to click request it. And again, I'm being prompted to type in my library card number and then my pin. And right off the bat, I'm being prompted to choose a pickup library. So by default, this is set for me to the Frank L. Weinberg Library. If I wanted to change it and pick it up somewhere else, if you work in Cedarburg and it's just easier for you to get things there, for example, um, I can click into this drop down menu and then choose any of the libraries in this list instead. And then I can choose the activation date, which by default is today's date, 1-13-2021. But if, for example, I didn't need this yet because I wasn't reading it for my book club yet or because I have other things I want to read first or whatever the case may be, I can request it now and then set it to activate later so that I don't forget about it. So let's say the book club example. Let's say my book club is at the beginning of March and I know I need about two weeks to read it. So I could set the activation date to 2-15-2021 and then on the 15th, the hold would activate and the library that owns it, which is us, would send it to me and get it ready for me without me even having to think about it after this. So you can use this feature to put things on hold and then suspend them if, if you don't need them right away, but you don't want to forget about them, or if you just have a lot going on and you want to set up uh, kind of a queue and have the um, catalog send you things in a steady stream. Once you're all set here, you'll click Submit Request, and then I get a confirmation screen, your request has been placed. From here, I can return to the search results and go back and, and keep looking for things. Um, I can go to my list of hold requests, or I can say log out, which is what I'm going to do. And that takes me back to the front page. So that is searching for items. Again, always using this quick library search is, is really the best way to go, um, and just being as uh, precise as possible. Do not feel bad, though, if even using this, the, if the catalog doesn't quite behave the way it should, um, you know, li librarians make it look easy, but we are just more used to the catalog and it's, it's little picadillos. Um, so it's, it's not at all unheard of for one person to look something up and it just not come up and then another person to try it. And it does totally normal. It happens even to us, you know, I'll look something up and then go to my coworker and say, Hey, where is it? And they'll go, it's right here. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So not to worry. So now let's talk about the features in the catalog that let you manage your account. So if you click on my account near the top of the screen here and then click on log in, this is where you can log into your account and take a look at what you've checked out and other things uh, like that. If you don't have a library card yet, for example, if you come into the catalog, you don't have a card with us quite yet, but you do live in Macon or Thienesville and you want to request a book, to have it sent to this library or to have it pulled for you. Um, you could go to my account, say login slash register, and then click or tap to register now. You'll be given a temporary barcode number, which usually starts with the letters P-A-C-R-E-G, PAC, REG, and then you'll be able to come in once the book gets here and pick up your actual physical card and get your permanent barcode number. So that option is here as well. But I already have a, a card number, so I'm going to go ahead and get signed in. 
And that drops me onto the items out page automatically. So this is what I have checked out. I can see the cover, the title, the date that it's due, how many renewals I have left, the call number where I found it, and the library that owns it. The, the owning library is relevant because if you request a book from West Bend, for example, they send it here, you check it out, then you return it, and then you go back into your account and you see that it's still there even though you returned it a few days ago. The library you want to call to ask what happened is not necessarily us, it's probably West Bend. From here you can also renew books. So if I had multiple things checked out and I wanted to renew them all at once, I could say renew all items. Or I can check the box beside an individual book and say renew selected items. And once I do that, then I get this confirmation screen, the item has successfully been renewed, and it tells me which ones, and I can go back. Now I checked the book out today, um, so you can't actually tell that I renewed it, but I did. And I can see also that my renewal is left to zero. By default, you get two renewals. Um, unless the item has holds on it, in which case it won't let you. It will give you an error message and say you can't you can't renew this because someone else is waiting for it. And by default, when you renew something, it gives you another checkout period. So if you renew a DVD, it gives you another seven days. Um, a regular book it gives you four weeks. Um, and then a new book, it gives you two, for example. Try to wait as close as you can to the actual due date so you can kind of maximize your time. Next, I want to talk about your requests page. So let's go over there. When we put the book on hold earlier, I mentioned the idea of suspending books or, or changing the activation date. So you can see what I've done here is I have a book club coming up. Um, so I have all of the books requested and I have suspended them until about two weeks out from each meeting of the book club. Um, so this is one way to use that suspend feature is to queue things up, um, either because you can't you can't read them all at once or because you don't want to think about it after you get the list of books from your book club or whatever's going on. I can see what the book is. I can see if it's suspended and how long it's suspended for. And I can see the library where I'm going to be picking it up. I can also, if I check the box beside an individual book, I can change the pickup location. So I could say I don't want to go to Frank L. Weinberg for this one. I want to go to Port Washington or somewhere else in the system. I can cancel a particular request, or I can suspend it further or reactivate it from here. So I've checked the box beside the Suggestible You, the book we requested earlier, and now I'm going to say Suspend slash Reactivate. And then I'll put in my new activation date, which again can be later, if I decide I don't want this until later in the year after all. Or it can be today's date to actually reactivate the request and get it going right away. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say Submit and then okay. And now it's jumped to the top of the list and I can see the status has changed to request place. So this means that a library in the system, probably us because I believe our copy was in, um, is going to get that ready and get it on the hold shelf for me. I can see at a glance that I'm the hold position number one, which means I'm going to get it pretty soon. If you're on a long wait list, this is the place to go to see where you're at and how soon it's going to come. This request screen, because then you can say, oh, I'm 50th in line. That might be a little while versus I'm number two, so it's probably going to be pretty soon. If the book is coming from another library and it's, it's on its way, this status will say shipped, and it will tell you when it was shipped. Um, if something has been stuck in the shipped, quote unquote, status, it's been several weeks, that is too long. For it to be taking to be shipped. So you should call us and let us know and, and we'll try to figure out where it went and what happened. Once the book arrives and we've checked it in for you, the status will change to held and it will say held and it will tell you how long you have to come and pick it up. By default that's seven days. If you don't come within seven days we'll just put the book back on the shelf or we'll send it home. There's no fines or fees or penalties of any kind for not picking up a book that you requested. We just we just put it back. We don't mind. Now, I don't actually want this book. Um, I did this as an example, so I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to check the box, scroll down, say cancel selected. It says, are you sure? I say, yes. Requests that you cancel will show up for a little while at the bottom of your list, just in case you did it by mistake. Um, it's usually only a couple of days, though. So if you do it by mistake, make sure you replace it right away or else it'll disappear. And then you won't know what you requested and canceled. There's also a fines and fees section here. 
I don't have any fines or fees, but if I did, it would tell me how much they are. Um, if your fines are more than $5, you can pay them here. Um, if you had a $5 fine or higher, there would be a button here to pay the fine online. Our limit for fines is $10. So if you have $10 or more on your account, you will not be allowed to check anything else out um, or to renew any items. Um, and again, you can come in here to pay that off or you can pay it in person at the library. It's completely up to you. Now, the last thing I want to mention, which ties into the other last thing in this list, is the My Records section. So this is where you can see the information that we have on file for you under Contact Information and Preferences. I'm going to click on that. So you can see the address and the email and the phone number, basically the contact information that you gave us when you registered. If any of this isn't accurate or it needs to be updated, um, give us a call. You can't do it online just in case, you know, someone ever got a hold of your card or managed to get into your account. We don't want them to be able to change your, your details. So um, you can only do it through us, but it's easy enough. Just ring us and we'll, we'll change it over. The exception, the one thing you can change, is right here under Preferences, this Maintain Reading History box. So by default, this is not checked. By default, the catalog will not maintain your reading history, meaning you won't be able to come in here and see on the left what books you've checked out and what other things you've checked out and when you looked at them last. But if you check this box, then from that day forward, the catalog will start to remember what you have checked out in the past which is useful if you read a lot or you watch a lot and you're not really sure what all you've done. Um, you can just jump in here and see the, the covers and the titles and, and jog your memory. Um, the reason that this is not checked by default, though, is because of privacy concerns. If there's no reading history, then if law enforcement comes into the library and asks us to tell them what you've read, we don't have to answer because we don't know. But if there is a reading history, then we're bound by law to answer. So if you're uncomfortable with the idea of your reading information possibly being subpoenaed someday or, or requested under the Patriot Act, um, leave your reading history off. If you're not worried about that or okay with it, um, then you can check the box and then say submit change request to turn on your reading history going forward. Again, it does not do it retroactively. It's only from that moment onward. Once your reading history is on and you actually have entries in it, you can get to it by clicking reading history over here on the left. And then you'll see the titles and the covers as well as when you check them out and who loaned them to you. So that is the account section of the catalog. Um, if you're looking at your account on our library computers, it's best to always click log out once you're done just so that nobody else can see what you've done and um, nobody else can possibly accidentally request something under your name. So you can do that by clicking log out here or log out here. And that takes you back to the home page. So that is the whole spiel on the library catalog. Um, as always, the handout is linked in the description below. If you have questions, feel free to get in touch with me. My contact information is in the description. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, and again, just to reiterate, if even after watching this, even if the catalog gives you trouble, totally normal. It gives us trouble too. It's just the cost of doing business the way that we do business here in library land. Um, so we'll all do our best to give each other a hand whenever we need to. I will see you back here on February 5th for an overview once again of Smartphones 201 Beyond the Basics. See you then.